Do you understand what you read? Do you understand what you read? That's the question we have before us this morning. Amen. This morning from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26 to 35, we find these words. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met a, an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasure of Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopian, Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet, do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearers in silence. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Then Philip began with this, with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God, for your word. Father, we come before you right now, God, in the master name of Christ. Thank you, God, for the day you blessed us with. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to come into the house of prayer and worship you, God. Father God, we give you total praise. We lift our hands. We lift our voices. And, and Father God, we just scream and shout hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, for all you are and all you do, God. And right now, during this harmonic moment, God, we pray you'll be with this, your humble servant. God, allow me to decrease one more time and you increase, God. Be with us all, God. Give us all receptive hearts and minds. We're looking to hear from you. So bless us, God, and bless this word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Last week we preached on the topic, topic of uh, don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you hear. That was taken from Acts chapter 17, verse 10 to 12. Um, we looked at how the apostle Paul, uh, who in that time frame, he was the man. <laughs> Paul knew what he was doing, knew what he was saying, amen. He was a man, but yet the Bereans still, they didn't believe everything he said. Still, the Bereans, the word said that they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. So just because he said it, that didn't mean they believed it. Amen. They still examined the scriptures to see if what Paul said was true. To believe what we hear, we must examine what we hear against the scriptures. Amen. To ensure that it is in accordance with the scriptures. And when it is not in accordance with scripture, we should say we ain't got to believe that. It ain't so. Amen. Yet we have to understand what we hear for ourselves is really, when we hear it for us, we must understand it. That that's the way we believe it because we, we understand it for ourselves. Otherwise, we don't understand it. It's just words. And sometimes we say amen to words that we don't really know what was said. Tell the truth now. Amen. Philip asked the question in our text today, do you understand what you are reading? And a unit. Did he, he didn't understand. He let him know, I don't understand. I got no, no clue what's going on. Hey, Aster, is that you over there? Is that Aster coming in? You get your Bible out front? Praise God. I saw it earlier today. Amen. Got to know your people, fam. She didn't get it. I was going to take it to the house and give it to her. That's what we do. Amen. Amen. So Philip asked that question. Do you understand what you're reading? He did not understand, the eunuch said. But he was open to hear someone explain it to him. This is Philip the Evangelist, who was among the seven chosen to wait tables. Amen? In Acts chapter 6, six we find the first seven deacons were chosen. We find these words in Acts, Acts 6, verses 5 through 6. This proposal pleased the whole group. They're trying to identify some, 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 some folks that would be deacons that would wait the tables and take care of the, the, the widows. He said, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Procreus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmaeus, 
and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. So again, this is Philip, not Philip the apostle. You see, there's a difference. But this man was being used by God to evangelize this area. Amen. We find, again, Philip the evangelist identified in Luke's gospel. Well, not Luke's gospel, Luke's uh, right in Acts chapter 21. In Acts 21, 7 through 8, Luke writes these words. We continued our voyage from Tyre and landed at Ptolemaeus, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed with them for a day. Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip the evangelist on one of the seven. Amen. So this is the Philip. This is the deacon, this is the evangelist that was doing the work of the Lord. He was evangelizing long before he had his opportunity to evangelize this Ethiopian unit. God was using him to make a difference there, and, and there was a lot of success in his ministry. And then the Spirit said, leave your ministry. What? We got past it. I ain't leaving nothing. I built this mages. I ain't going nowhere, but the Lord, through his Spirit, through the angel Lord, said, leave your ministry. Who would have left? You got the biggest church in South Jersey. Leave and go to that place around the corner. Got 10 members. Where you, who going to leave? <laughs> Philip left. We find that the, the, the Lord's spirit, the, the angel Lord said, leave and go down there into the desert. And ain't nothing in the desert. But he left anyhow. Amen. So we understand, we understand the spirit of the evangelist. He was going to do what thus the Lord. It wasn't about fame or it wasn't about fashion. He wanted to, to, to spread the word of, about Jesus Christ, the good news. Amen. We have to, a need, we have a need to understand what we read so that we might believe what we read. There are folks I meet all the time and they brag about how many times they, they read the Bible. Oh, I read the Bible five times. Oh, I read it six times. Amen. How much do you remember? None of it, but I read it. How much do you understand? I don't understand, but I read it. No, we got to slow down and read the Bible. Read it slow. Read it over. You know, you ain't got to get through it in one year. Amen? You ain't got to read a chapter a month, a chapter a week. You got to read what you understand. Read it until the Spirit of God speaks to you and says, okay, you got it, now move on. Amen? Okay, Pastor God, you preach that. Did you preach that, that sermon last year? Yeah, because they didn't get it last year. I hope they get it this year. Philip had an opportunity here to evangelize this man this, in this, this chariot. He didn't even know who he was. Didn't know where he came from. Didn't know what he knew, but he had an opportunity because the Spirit said, go. The angel said, go. The Spirit said, go. And Philip went. Sometime... The Lord sends an angel to us to say, go, we don't go. He sends a spirit, we don't go. Another spirit, don't go. Eventually, we got to go. Amen? Y'all heard the one about the, the, the man who, who drowned and, and found his way up in heaven? And, and, and he came before the Lord and said, Lord, you said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. You said you'd always be there with me. Why? What happened? He said, what, what, are you talking, what happened? He said, well, well, the flood came and, and the, the waters rose and the rain came and, and I drowned. He said, well, you say, I, I told you I was going to be with you. He said, remember, I sent a car and the sheriff knocked on your door and said, leave. And he said, the Lord will provide. And you stayed right there and the water began to raise and you, you got on top of, the, of your roof and, and I sent somebody in the boat and you wouldn't get in and said, the Lord will provide. And you still stayed there. And then there was a helicopter and they put a ladder down. That was me. And you didn't take it. <laughs> the Lord has provided. The Lord will provide. He'll put somebody in your life to speak into your life. Yeah. And sometimes you got to slow down long enough and stop speaking long enough and stop doing, doing, doing long enough so God might get a word in his eyes. Philip went down there and did nothing. Went down there and stood because God didn't tell him what to do. He said, go down there. Sometimes the Lord says, just go there and see what happens. Amen. There has not been a Sunday in my 20 years. I have just preached on a Sunday. And then somebody has called me, text me, grab me, said, Pastor, that's exactly what I needed this week. They see me the next week, that's exactly what I needed during the week because someone asked about that and I had it. It was fresh in my mind. Amen. Because God's prepared you and given you opportunities to witness to some folks. Amen. 
I just love those conversations when, I, when you walk in the room and say, Pastor Scott, what do you know about this? I'm, oh, man, I just read that last night. Thank you, Jesus. You, you ever had that? Man, I just heard, I just studied that last night. And right on time, that's the way the spirit works. I don't know about you, but that's the way it works for me. Because I ain't that smart, but it always has something ready for it. Oh, what? It's right there. I didn't, I didn't study that. The Lord took you to it. So he might get the most out of you, Anthony. Amen? T tell the truth. That's the way God will work it out for us. I thank God for working out in your life, my life. Amen? We must understand what we read. Again, Philip the Evangelist, I implore you, don't brag about how many times you've read the Bible. Brag about how much you understand in his word. Take the time to read it. Take the time to slow down and, 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 and engulf it. Take the time not to rush through it. Take the time to question the scripture. You know it's, not, you're okay, it's okay to question the text. You'll find your answer once you question it. It's okay to, to read it over and over. It's okay to go to a commentary, to a Bible dictionary. It's okay to check with your Holy Ghost home and see what God told them about it. It's okay to try and understand this word for yourself. That's what we're trying to do, understand it for yourself. Amen. So slow down a little bit. Search scriptures. The more we examine the scriptures, the more we will know about God. The more we examine the scriptures, the more we're going to know about God's plan for our lives. Amen? He has a plan for you and one for me. You know, when you take a history book and start reading that history book over and over, you start understanding about history. If you just got a brief glimpse of history, you're going to repeat some things. But when you read it for yourself and understand it, you understand, know this is how we got ourselves to And you might not do it again. Amen? But the more we read, the more we understand. When you read a science book over and over, you begin to understand something about science. Thank you, God. Um, one of my, my, my professors back in, in undergraduate, um, his name is uh, Dr. Polonis. And Dr. Polonis was very, very bright. He was very, very bright. I say that because he was so bright <laughs> that he wrote the book. <laughs> he, he wrote the book on applied electromagnetics, Martin A. Polonis. This is my, my, my senior year, and I'm like, man, this stuff, it was making my head spin. And raised my hand, Dr. Polonis, what about this? He said, he'd be writing on the board. So on page 52 in the book. Dr. Polonis, what about this? It's on page 103 in the book. I'm like, man, turn around and talk because I couldn't get it, you know? Because sometimes you read some stuff and you just don't get it. So I, I, I want to just, I'm going to go in a few pages. How far? I don't want to go to the back of the book because that's where the tough stuff at. But I'm going to see, you know, who understands applied math, you know, electromagnetics. So... <laughs> <laughs> Let me mess with a few folks. Amen. <laughs> this is uh, the, um, um, I believe, uh, Cullum's force law, the electric field. Cullum's law gives the force that will be exerted on a point charge Q2 when it is placed in the vicinity of another point charge Q1. If we remove Q2 but re re retain Q1 in a fixed position, we can say that the electric field remains in the space about Q1. The magnitude of the electricity field at a point is a force per unit charge on a positive test charge. At that point, provided the test charge called um, delta Q2 is small enough so not to disturb the field that we are testing. The electric field is a vector because the force on Okay, now let's be honest. <laughs> Who got that? Who got that? <laughs> that Dr. Wayne over there? <laughs> Dr. Wayne got that. <laughs> Anybody else get that one? You got it, Ray? Ray got it. You got it, Kyle? He got a little bit of it. Amen? Hey, sometimes we don't understand what we read, Dr. Neely. <laughs> it, because that young man, raise his hand over there. He five, he 12, two years old. If you understand it, you're a genius, amen. <laughs> but we study God's word so we might understand it. And it's not the first time we read it. Sometime we read it, and it's literally Greek to us. But the more we read it, the more we go to it with the Spirit's help, we will understand it, amen. The more we go with our friends now in Bible study and Sunday school, and we begin to hear it, we'll understand it, amen. This Ethiopian eunuch didn't understand it because he had not had Bible study yet. 
He ain't been to Alpha Baptist Church prayer meets at 6.30. Sister Tanya, he ain't been there yet. He's not been in our, in our, in our Sunday school. He's not been in, in, our, in our church and heard preaching one Sunday after another about the word of God. He didn't understand. But we should. Because we have the benefit of, of commentaries and Bible dictionaries and, 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 and bright folks in our church who, who've been studying the word of God a long time. They can share this. We can glean from them. Amen. And this man gleaned from Philip because God gave the opportunity to send Philip right to his doorsteps. And somebody is going to be sent by the Lord today after church <laughs> to somebody. And, and they're going to be in while while buying their business. Say, and somebody said, do you know about this? And say, man, we just heard about that in Sunday school. And you have an opportunity to, to preach and to teach and to talk about God's word. Amen. You, you know, in college, normally, you know, when you don't start by taking chemistry A03. They might give you chemistry A01, then chemistry A02. You can't take chemistry A03 unless you've successfully got through A01 and 2. Because 3, it's a monster. And you need some context for 3, and you need some background, you need some foundational stuff to really deal with 3, Amen. So we think we're going to jump right in the Bible. I got folks to pass. I'm starting my preaching next Sunday. You, you just opened the Bible last week. How you, what you preaching on? You know one prayer. God is good. God is great. God is good. And we thank him for this food. We got to spend some time in God's word. And allow God's word to spend time in us. So that when God needs us. It will be there and he can pull it out of us. Praise God. Amen. AO1 prepares us for AO3. AO2 prepares us for AO3. So we may understand it at that deep, deep, deep level. Amen. So again, it is not the words that we don't understand. Sometimes it's the, the knowledge of understanding those individual words. Amen. I was at the library yesterday and down in Pensacola and just minding my business. And most times libraries are very quiet. You ever go to the library, it's not quiet? You be, shh, shh. Somebody look at you and say, what? <laughs> people be packing now, don't mess with people, don't shush nobody. I don't shush no adult, amen? I just barely shush, shush two-year-olds nowadays. But we're in the library, and I'm sitting there, and there was all this talking behind me. And I looked over there, and there was about six or seven uh, ladies who, they speak very fluent Spanish. I ain't understand a word they were saying. It was words. Somebody understood, but I had no clue. I was at a loss for words. And then their tutor came in. And the tutor was going, taking them through some, some just general uh, conversation. And I'm going, I understand everything the tutor says. And now they're beginning to understand. It was, I was at a disadvantage because I didn't understand Spanish. Sometimes we look in the Bible, and it's Spanish to all of us. So we need someone else to help guide us through that. This Ethiopian eunuch was probably reading in Greek. And he understood Greek. He probably spoke in Greek. And that's how he and Philip could conversate later. But even though he knew the words, he didn't know the word. So you might be very proficient in the words of English. And you can read the Bible from cover to cover. But you've got to understand the word which takes some spiritual insight from the Lord. Amen? Don't go into the Bible making it an academic exercise. Amen? Because you'll finish up being very academic and not understand the word of God. Amen? So again, in that library, their language was, was Spanish, but they were learning English, and it was happening very rapidly. And I still wasn't understanding no Spanish. <laughs> she, she, what, what word we got? Hola, como esta? Hola, como esta? I got them. Tomorrow, I probably won't have them, but I got them right now. <laughs> and that means, <laughs> hey, come on now, hey. In our text today, the Ethiopian unit was, unit was traveling home after spending some time in Jerusalem worshiping God. He came to worship God. He was reading and he was writing. He was writing and he was reading. It, it was the reading that, that, that is what our attention should come to today. Dr. Craig Keener writes that the official New Greek 
that was a trade language in the Egypt, Egyptian cities at the time. And because Philip understood what he was reading, Keener says he was probably communicating in Greek. So it was probably an official, the official was probably reading from the Septuagint. And that's the Greek version of the Hebrew Bible that was available at the time. This was not a cheap Bible. It probably wasn't full of six, six books of the Bible, but the Septuagint had the six, six books plus the Apocrypha. But the Bible that he had, we hear the, the scroll of uh, Isaiah. Scrolls were very cumbersome to read. You didn't sit there and open a book. You had to roll one side and unroll the other side to read it. They were very expensive, so the man had some means, you know? He had his own scroll of Isaiah. He, he also was in a, a chariot. A chariot that, that would seat at least how many? At least three? Because he wasn't driving. And he told Philip to get up in here with me. So at least three. Were in, so it was probably pulled by one or two horses. He had some money. He had money. He had position. But he ain't had no Jesus. I know some folks got money. They got position. But they don't know nothing about Jesus. We got to get to understand who Jesus is. Amen. That's who the scripture was talking about. It was talking about Jesus, the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. The Ethiopian was a seeker. He was seeking to understand and comprehend what he read. I remember back in the day reading comprehension. I remember in elementary school on our report card. You got a grade for reading comprehension. You got a grade for reading and then comprehension. He can read, but he don't understand nothing. <laughs> oh, you didn't get them? <laughs> read everything, but don't, oh, no, don't ask to repeat anything back to you. Amen? <laughs> Mr. Wiles, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> reading comprehension is important. It's very important. It's not about how much we read. It's not about what we read. It's about what we understand that we read. So let's look at three points concerning what we read, understanding what we read. The first point, God provides an opportunity. He provides you an opportunity to read his word. He provides others opportunity to read that word and take that word and share it with you so that we might grow. I thank God for the opportunity to help folks grow in his word. So we'll look at the first part of our scripture today, verses 26 to 28, it says, Now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of the Kandake, Daki, which means queen of Ethiopia. Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. And on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophets. There's a lot of discussion on as was he um, a God-fearer? Was he a proselyte? We don't know what he was. You know, we don't know what he was. We know that the man wanted to know a little bit more about God. That's what we'll stay today. He wanted to know about God. So he, that's why he was there worshiping God. I believe that Philip was very sensitive to, to God leading. God's spirit was leading him. And so should we. When he was told to go, he didn't know where he was going. Didn't know what to expect. He just went. So both the angel and of the Lord and the spirit speak to Philip in verses 26 and 29, telling him to go. And Philip went. He didn't get ahead of the Lord. He just waited for God to speak once he got to where God told him to go. Amen. So wait on the Lord. Amen. Dr. Keener tells it again that most travelers like Philip, he said they move around on foot. But persons with greater means, they would use donkeys or more expensively, they would use horses and some would use camels. And those who had the most resources, they would have, you know, like this guy today, they had a chariot that would pull them from here and there. Amen. Money and position, but no Jesus. A scroll and he could read it and not understand it. So he needed someone to tell him about it. Amen. And reading out loud in that context, everyone read out loud. It wasn't a... Many, many years later, we started to learn how to read silently. Folks read out loud, especially when it wasn't your language. Much easier to read out loud. So it was easy for, for Philip to stand there and listen to what was saying. I'm here to tell you that it is not a crapshoot when it comes to reading and studying God's word. We must go to the word with the spirit and allow the spirit to guide us of where 
the Spirit would have us to go. Amen? Amen. Sister Brenda, I see you got everybody today, huh? Amen. I saw your daughter run in. She got it right at the birthday song. God bless you, sister. Amen. Hey, that's all right. She came right in, got a kiss, saying happy to mama. Amen. Got the grandbabies here. Praise God. Um, so it's not a crapshoot. We should go to God's word and study it for ourselves. And, and don't just go in there and open up and let it fall where it falls. Ask God to help you study his word so you might hide it where? In your heart. That's what we're trying to do, hide that word in our hearts. We should look for these opportunities to learn and apply the life-giving word of God to our lives. We must be prepared to help others to understand the word of God. Amen. People like you and I are just like this Ethiopian. We may be asking ourselves, maybe asking us, how can I understand this unless someone explains it to me? Because sometimes I open the word of God and, and I'll be like, what is this? I'll look at one of my, my, my favorite writers. I'll look at a Dr. Keener or a, a Dr. Wisby and I'll look and see, what is And I'll say, oh, the light bulb comes on. You ever read a commentary and the light bulb comes on? You be reading that scripture five, six times and it just don't make no sense. You look at a commentary and it go, bingo. Oh, man, just like that. That's what the Spirit will do for us. He'll put somebody else in your life to make sure that you understand what he wants you to understand in his holy word. Amen. Yes. Philip must have known this passage before. He must have been, it must have been fresh in his mind. Because the man said, How, I need somebody to explain it. He went right in on it. Right there. He said, let me go home and, and study a little bit more. He began to talk to him about who? Jesus. Who's this passage? Who's this, this prophet talking about himself or somebody else? He's talking about Jesus. So when people say it's not about Jesus, no, it, the whole Bible is about who? It's about Jesus. It's about what Jesus Christ came, lived, and died for us. What he did for us, amen? That's what the Bible is about, what Jesus did, amen? We find these words in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Peter says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Are you kidding me? Always be prepared to give an answer. It says to everyone, to everyone, you should have an answer for why you are a Christian today. You should have an answer as to why you believe in Jesus Christ today. You should be able to at least find one scripture. John 3, 16. Who can find that one? It's in John chapter 3, verse 16. I'm sorry. Every, who, does, who knows Tim Tebow? Tim Tebow was a, a wonderful, unbelievable college football quarterback. Florida Gators? Florida Gators. Two, two national titles? Amen. His junior year, Tebow was a, was a devout Christian. He let people know he was a Christian. He wasn't playing with his Christianity. So he, everyone had that, that, that um, eye black underneath their eyes. And he, he put his, and, and he got a pen, a little, little self, a, a sharpie, and he wrote Philippians 4.13 there. And what's that mean? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And folks, they, they kind of dug that, amen? And then... In his junior year before the, the championship game for the national title, he, he started praying to God about changing that. He felt it, something from God to say he should change it. He wants to change it too. He said it came to him to put John 3.16 there. And he went to his coach. The coach, I mean, his coach was kind of superstitious. <laughs> Didn't like things changing. <laughs> said, you're going to mess that up. The 4.13 is working pretty good for us. He said, but the Lord's saying, use John 3.16. He put John 3.16 there. And he said it was with his coach, his family, uh, uh, you know, a week later or so, they won the championship game, had John 3, 16 up there. And the coach said he was getting calls from the, the publicity part, I guess, of the school. And they said uh, after the national game and during the national game, 93 million people Googled John 3, 16. Yeah. 93 people wanted to understand what is he talking about. Could you imagine doing anything in your life that 93 million people would go to the Word of God to understand what you're talking about? Can you imagine 93 million people pulling that up on Google and it says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And you go, what? Could you imagine the spirit working in 93 million people? Somebody, I'm here to tell you, somebody going to find Jesus. <laughs> so we got an opportunity to tell folks about Jesus. And we don't know what it will it'll, it'll happen in their life, what it's that chain reaction. But somebody's going to be changed when you talk about Jesus. And sometimes it's not your words, it's your actions that will show people that you love Jesus. Amen? I, I thank God for that message from, from Tim Tebow. He was not a great uh, pro football player. But in college, he was the man. And when he played in that national game, everybody was watching. John 3.16. Man, I should stop right there. But Deacon Steve said, keep moving, so I'm going to keep moving. <laughs> Philip didn't beat down this man for not knowing the scripture. And sometimes we beat people over the head with the Bible because we know more than they know. He didn't beat him over the head. He just came there and began to help. And sometimes folks need our help. And we got to humble ourselves because they've humbled themselves. And we got to learn how to help. Well, brother, I, I've been right where you at. And God used so-and-so to work me out of that hole to help me understand a little bit better. Amen. Been there, know that. Who got the t-shirt to prove it? Amen. Been there, Anthony. We find these words in Hebrews eleven six, 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. This man was earnestly seeking the Lord. He truly was. He was earnestly seeking the Lord. He got in a, in a chariot pulled by horses and rode to Jerusalem some 300 miles, maybe even more. And then he got there and he listened. I don't know how long he was there, but then on the way home, he was still listening, trying to understand this word for himself, reading it in the scroll. And then he, he's reading out loud and, and his, chariot, his chariot's going and somebody says, do you understand what you're reading? What? Who would have said, driver, speed up? <laughs> this dude trying to get some coins, amen? <laughs> we don't know. He might have, you know, again, how, well, how would you respond? You're in a chariot. The horses are giddy up. And, and the guy says, you, you understand what, you, what you're reading? How can I unless someone explain it to me? Get up in here and tell me what it means. My Lord. My Lord. God gets the glory. We make the Lord the main thing. Philip made the Lord the main thing. Amen. He truly did. This man was earnestly seeking God, and he found God right there with Philip, telling him how to, who that, that, that pastor was talking about. Amen. Jesus, who is the Christ. So the second point, God provides someone to explain his word. God provides, provides somebody to come to you and explain that word. God gives you somebody. To go to and explain the word. You know more about the word of God than many folks you know. On your job. Wherever you may be in, your, in, in the, the, the marketplace. There's somebody going to ask you something. You got to know more. About what the Lord has done for you. You have a testimony. You have a witness of how good God has been. Amen. I remember where y'all came from. Many of y'all, I remember. Come on, let's tell the truth. We know where we came from. <laughs> Brother Ezra, you get the chills just thinking about it, eh? You know why? Because it wasn't that long ago. But we can tell someone what God has done for me, how he picked me up out of the Mari clay and placed my feet on the solid rock. And now, huh, I praise him every chance I get. God provides someone to explain the word. We find these words in the second part of our prayer scripture this morning, Acts 8, 29 through 31. The spirit told Philip, Go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. It didn't say that they stopped right there. They must have kept moving because eventually they came to some water. So Philip's in the, the chariot riding. Who, who, who reads their car? Anybody reading their car? Put it on the steering wheel as you drive, but you know, you gotta be careful, amen. 
So my, my car, I have a special car. Y'all know I got a special car? My car has a 17-inch screen right here. And I, it, it's, it's a browser. So I can Google. So all week my scripture's been sitting right there in my car. So I don't need paper or pen. Just don't let the police catch you reading while you're driving. But you could use things to make sure you get that word from the pages into your mind. So all week I've been reading my scripture right there in the car. These guys were in the chariot reading. They didn't have Google. They didn't have a browser. When I read something, got a problem, and I just hit, check that out, and it go, something else pops in there. Couldn't do that in their, their day and age, amen. So Philip had some knowledge of the scripture, and he had some knowledge of who Jesus Christ was and what Jesus Christ had done, and he shared that. He began to share with this man right from that very passage about Jesus Christ. When you begin to talk about scripture to your people, to your friends, to your enemies, when you talk about scriptures, it all leads to Jesus Christ. When you preach a sermon, teach a lesson, it should all lead to who? Jesus Christ. You can come up here and preach all week. You can, you can have your private Bible studies and, 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 and study all week. You can pray all week, but you must call on the name of Jesus because it's about Jesus who is a Christ. It's in him that we live and breathe and have our being. Him that we live and move and have our being. Make sure that Jesus Christ is the main thing. Amen. We must allow the Lord to guide us to the scriptures and then through the scriptures. Amen. There must be some context, some understanding. It is not good to study God's word in a vacuum without any assistance at all. It's okay to go to a commentary or two or three. 15 some Sundays. It's okay to, to listen to somebody else. Listen to someone else preach a, a sermon. It's okay to listen to someone else teach a, teach a lesson. Uh, Dr. Keener, again, one of my favorite writers, I, you can go online and find a Bible study with Dr. Keener and sit there and let him teach you on any scripture in the Bible. I'm, what? That's what's available to us today. We can take advantage of it. Amen. God has provided us folks to come around us and give us assistance in explaining what the word of God means, amen. As Christians, we have over 2,000 years of a Christian tradition. We have scholarship, we have interpretation, we have commentaries and Bible dictionary, we have all these things available to us. So we know and we should understand when we start hearing things about this type of prophetic text, when you start talking about uh, you know, the suffering, we start talking about humbling themselves and things like that, we all understand we go right to Jesus Christ because of what we've been taught. But that's not what this man had. This unit doesn't have the benefits of 2,000 years of Christian tradition. The passage was a mystery to him. It was a puzzle. He couldn't put it together. We need folks like Philip to interpret what the text means to us. Somebody who knows a little bit more than we do. Amen? And it wasn't just Philip and it wasn't just the eunuch that needed help. It was the disciples too. Let's look at what the disciples talked about Jesus talked to them. We find in Luke's gospel chapter 18, verse 31 through 34, Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem. And everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. He will be delivered over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, insult him, and spit on him. They will flog him and kill him. On the third day, he will rise again. The, what do we say? Hallelujah. That, that sounds like... Easter Sunday morning, right? But there wasn't no Easter Sunday morning yet. So they didn't know what, what he's talking about. So we find in verse 34, the disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they did not know what he was talking about. They didn't understand the scripture. They didn't understand what they were hearing. It wasn't written yet, but they didn't understand it. But it was in the Old Testament. The disciples on the road to Emmaus, Jesus Christ, after it had risen from the dead. He was walking on the streets and he met some disciples on the road to Amazon and he explained the scriptures to them. We find these words in Luke chapter 24, verse 30, 25 through 27. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. They didn't understand it. But it was there in the Old Testament scriptures. Amen. He continues in verse 30 of chapter 24 of Luke. 
when he was at the table with them. He took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? He opened the scriptures to them. Now, he had been with them for some three and a half years. He had opened the scriptures over and over. They just didn't get it. Sometime, tell the truth, we're hard-headed. Anybody hard-headed over there? Shake your head. I see you. you, you. Hey, I'm in, a, in the same, same company. Amen? We hard-headed, but he will not stop. He continued until they got it. Amen? So again, even after the resurrection, and at the tomb, there was still some unbelief, and people didn't understand, amen, the word of God. We find these words in John 20, verse 6 through 10. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that was, was, had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finding the other disciple who had reached the, the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to what they were, where they were staying. He's just risen from the dead. He's just done what he said he would do. He's just fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies, and they still don't get it. Some of us are still there. Philip didn't know what to do, but he obeyed the Spirit. He obeyed the angel of the Lord, and he waited to see what God would do next. And God used him to explain to this Ethiopian amen. And the third and final point, God provides a starting point. When you're going to do some witnessing, God will give you a point to start at. Amen. Remember Jesus Christ at the well, I think it was uh, John 4, with the woman at the well? And, and, and she came there, and Jesus came to his water, and, and she, they started a conversation talking about water. He started, Minister Phyllis, right there at water. He started right where she was at and led her to this, 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 this living water that if you ever drink from it, you'll never, you'll never need no water again. And she got it right then. This, this apostles come back from the town of Sikar and, and and Jesus said, look out there how ripe it is. And they worried about some food at this time. He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. He, and she said, I'm going back to the town. She left him, went back there and said, come and see. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Tell, come on, see a man. She got it. Have we got it yet, fam? We got to be the cause of somebody else getting it. Amen. So again, the third and final point, God provides a starting point. Verse 32 to 33, these words, this is the passage of scripture the unit was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before a shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In this humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. There's good news about Jesus all throughout the Bible. Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, amen, poetry is all about Jesus Christ. It's good news. He's alive and he's well. And for that, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Ethiopian humbled himself and said, I don't know. I need somebody. Can somebody explain to me what these words mean? Amen. Dr. Spurgeon, he says that, does it not strike you as being remarkable that, that he should be reading at the, that moment the best text that Philip could have selected? If Philip had chosen to text himself, he probably would have chosen the same one. This was nothing but the Holy Spirit. This was not Philip. This is the Holy Spirit. So when we're doing our evangelism work, it's not about us. It's about the Spirit putting us into place to tell someone about Jesus and know that the Spirit has already got them ready to receive the word from you. We think that I preached all Sunday and ain't nobody come to Jesus. 
okay, I want three people to raise your hand. If you don't believe you're going down, you ever see preachers start that? Going down that road, we need somebody. No, the results are not about you. The results belong to the Lord, amen? The Spirit of God should be working in your life to bring these things to fruition, amen? There are some folks I've preached to for 30 years. I ain't seen no changes. Amen? Should I be jealous when somebody comes in, just got out of school, just came out of seminary, and they say, how you doing? They say, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> what, what did I do? You did what you're supposed to do. You were faithful to the word of God, and you continued to, to talk to them about Jesus Christ. Amen? You continue to water it and water it, and the Holy Spirit gets the increase. We worry too much about the increase. Hallelujah. So again, God provides a starting point. Amen. It's hardly an accident that this is the precise moment Philip walks up that the man begins to read this passage out loud. And then Philip had an opportunity to go to him and begin to take him through the biblical writ. We don't know which text he put, he pulled out, but he had something in his bag of tricks. Amen. He had a sales pitch already provided, but it wasn't the sales pitch that helped this man come to know who Jesus was. It was Peter. It was Philip opening up the word of God to him, letting the spirit guide him and direct him through that word. So Philip immediately took advantage of the God-given opportunity, and he began to share this wonderful word of God with him. The Ethiopian eunuch was reading the suffering serv servant section of Isaiah 53. Philip doesn't barge in him and impose a lot of other things on him. He began right there. If you look at Isaiah 53, 7 and 8, it says, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Who are we talking about? From our perspective, it's Jesus Christ. If you've never heard about Jesus Christ, you don't know that. The Ethiopian unit didn't know that. He, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, from the transgressions of my people. He was punished. He was punished and bruised for your iniquity and mine. Amen. We know what Christ did. We know why he came. Amen. But starting there with that scripture, Isaiah 53, 7 and 8, that is not the ending, that's where he began. Again, we don't know what other scriptures he's used. It should always be easy to talk about Jesus. When we're talking about scripture, we should be talking about Jesus. Amen? Good morning. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Highly favored by who? By Jesus. Amen? It is in Jesus Christ I live and breathe and have my being. I do nothing apart from Jesus. We had to talk about Jesus. Amen? I, I was sick yesterday, but the Lord took care of me. Jesus. <laughs> Nobody, says Brenda, <laughs> but Jesus. Amen. We got to start and begin with Jesus. The whole Bible, again, points to Jesus. There's a famous missionary. His name is Dr. Living, uh, David Livingstone. He started off across Africa. He had a group of folks with him, and he had some folks in baggage carriers. They were carrying his books. He was carrying 73 books across Africa. They were packed in three large packs, and they were heavy, weighed over 180 pounds, amen. And after traveling about 300 miles, he said, this is too much. Well, I don't know if he did, but the folks carrying said, this is too much. So he began to get rid of some of the books. He got rid of about half of them, and, and they continued to go. And as fatigue began to, to setting, he began to throw away one book after another. His whole library grew less and less, amen, until there was one book left. What book do you think that was? He saved the Bible. The quote was, while some books inform, other books transform. Do you want a book that transforms or one that informs? Read the book, the Bible, that will transform you. Amen. We carry around so much stuff with us. But one thing we should carry around, Minister Wallace, is the, the good book. It might be on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. I pray that some of it is in your heart. So we might not sin against the Lord. Amen. Verse 39, chapter 5 of John, we find these words. It says, it says, you study the scriptures diligently. 
because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. We have life in Jesus Christ, and the scriptures should take us right to Jesus Christ. It's about Christ, not about you. It's about his word, not about you. Amen? It's not what we do for Christ, but it's what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. The eunuch did not understand everything, but something that Philip said must have, have, have pre or made his, his attention go to baptism. Because can we stop right here? I see some water. And, and, and the Bible tells that they both went down into the water and he baptized him. And Philip didn't run around and say, you know who I baptized? I baptized a dude with all the money. You know, the guy with the, with the, the, the chariot with the spinners on him? I baptized him. Sometimes we, we bring folks to Christ and we want to stand next to them all the time and tell people what we did for them. I, I helped him come to know Jesus. Amen. When we start bragging about that, we're in trouble. Because God gets the glory, not you and not me. It's about God's glory. Amen. We must understand what we read and we must tell others about it. So they might cry, what must I do to be saved? And we lead them down that Romans road. Amen. That road that leads to life is in the biblical writ. Amen. We find these words that, that it's not the reading of the word of God that led the Ethiopian unit to God. It was understanding of the word. He, he read it, the word before Philip, but after Philip, he understood the word. And once he understood the word, he said, I want to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy, Spoke, Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to become one of the king's kids. What do you want to do, family? Who here wants to be one of the king's kids? I want to be recognized as one of the king's kids. Amen. Amen. We find these words in Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Hallelujah. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Not the work of Philip, not the work of the Ethiopian eunuch, not the work of any of the apostles. This was the work of the Spirit of God giving us opportunity to tell someone about Jesus. I pray this week we spend time telling someone about Jesus. Read the word for ourselves, understanding the word, and then taking it to somebody. When the Lord says, go over there and stand and wait, go and stand and wait. And then when God says, speak, speak. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for blessing us with this day. We pray, God, that you will be with us, God, as we go out to the highways and byways and be involved in the work of incarnational transformation, telling folks about Jesus. So, Father God, bless us this day. Bless the message, God, and be with us as we've heard it, God. Let us put it into action, as Brother Frank said. Not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, family. He's, he's worthy. He's worthy.